and welcome to round nine of Pro Tour Born of the Gods. I'm Brian David Marshall. I'm here with Randy Bueller, and we are watching Tom Martell, who just tweeted yep. uh, at the end of the last round, <laughs> phase one of eight complete, 1-0 in my pod, PTBNG. There you go. So stage phase two is win, phase three is win. I think phase eight is actually phases... draw. Oh, yeah, that, that makes sense. <laughs> but everything else is win. He, he started off two and three. He needs to win, you know, Seven straight matches today if he's going to Well, he's off it. to a good start. This is uh, the white aggressive strategy is what a, he and a lot of his Team Pantheon teammates like. They want to be white. They want to be aggressive. They like loyal Pegasus. You play a two drop. You're just able to hit the ground running. He is on a mulligan to six, but that's a pretty solid start. Yeah, flutter step Eidolon for Daniel Unwin, who is blue-white to uh, Tom's green-white. There you get a look at the cards that are in uh, Tom's hand. Was that, did we hear a result already? Texture. Melissa DeTora's up a game, I think, is what I heard. That was very fast. Yeah, Ouroboros, God of the Dead. Oh, that'll do it, huh? Got the job done pretty quickly. One, one of two Oresco's sun guides in uh, Tom's deck. Yeah, so she's up a game on Nico Boney. Comes a Laguna Ban Elder to gain three for Daniel Unwin. How much do we know about Daniel Unwin? Uh, da Daniel Unwin's got four Grand Prix top eights. He's he's a very well respected deck builder. I know he's worked with uh, Jeremy Neiman in the past mm -hmm. uh, and the sort of Australian team to, to come up with some some pretty um, groundbreaking standard decks along the way. He's you know a, a, a constructed specialist. All right, would be the and description. yeah, four top eights. That's not a lot of Grand Prix played. And only ele yeah, only eleven Grand Prix played. Nice. So he's, he has a, he has a good percentage, and he's here on a as a result of a top four at Grand Prix Brisbane, I believe. There you go. So Voyaging Seder had joined Tom's team last turn, and he sends it in. And uh, I think we're going to see a battle-wise yeah. valor here. Laguna Band or, wants to trade for this. Perhaps guide. a feral invocation. Feral invocation. It's even better. Yeah. You talk about how good Traveling Philosopher is. What do you think of the Sun Guide? <laughs> Sun Guide's just It's a lot better than Traveling Philosopher. He is a lot better. It's really easy for him to gain 6-8 life. How, how good the Traveling Philosopher is is probably, you know, just how, like, just needed he is, right? Yeah. Like, just to, to do a job. There's another Laguna, a, a Laguna Ben Elder on the other side of the table in Tom's hand. There you get a look at Tom's stats. Yeah, he's been playing uh, so, great so magic the last couple of years. I think the thing that's really kind of staggering about Tom's career it's because Tom's been around for a very long time. He's only played in 16 Pro Tours. Yeah, I mean, he hasn't been around for that whole decade. It's like right. he played a little bit back, you know, 10, 12 years ago. And since he's come back and since he's gotten himself, you know, into this platinum mm -hmm. uh, elite status, he has a three-year median that rivals Luis Scott Vargas. It might be slightly better than Luis wow. Scott Vargas's when Luis was on his incredible tear. Sure. Well, I hear uh, I hear rare flying creatures are a good thing. Prognostic yes. Sphinx and Storm Breath Dragon take game one for Christian Seabold against Lee Shi Tian, the to be last king of the undefeated hill. player in the in the room, and the current king of the hill. All right, Tom lining up an attack. Looks like Tom is saying, "I don't want to get divine verdicted here." And that is wow. exactly it. He said, that was I'm a not nice gonna, read. He's like, I'm not going to risk my, my two cards here. You can have my Voyaging Seder. You can have my Loyal Pegasus. You cannot, you cannot have my Rusko Sun Guy. That was an awesome vacation. read. His opponent shipped the turn with a handful of cards and four untapped lands. <laughs> it's like either you have absolutely nothing, in which case I can afford to right. not attack here. Right, and you could have Grip Tide, which is, which is a card that Daniel Unwin has in his hand. You could have maybe a Nullify. Well, he can't have a Nullify. He didn't have two blue, but... Yeah, so Tom did not attack with his 4-4 four -four because he didn't want to run it into Divine Verdict. Super well played. Well, now what do you do? There's still four <laughs> untapped mana. You, already, you, you think you baited the Divine Verdict... But and that's there's it. another one. I don't. Are there two more, or is that our hand left uh, over from the first one? I think there's one more. Sure. And now, yeah, now, now he brings it all. Right. Oh, this time it's grip tied. All right, so he's going to grip tied the sun guy. That makes sense. Feral invocation falls off and goes to the graveyard. But uh, you know, yeah, Daniel Tom still can, takes four. Yeah, yeah. Tom's applying pressure. Grip tied is 
awesome when you're in sort of a stable board or when you're ahead. It's just spectacular if it's at the top of your curve. You've got kind of the aggressive draw. You're removing a blocker, denying them another draw phase. Now the Sounds like we have another result. Ivan Flock up one game over Hai Bing Hu, despite mulliganing to five uh, in that game. 21, 22. So we have Melissa up a game, Christian Sable up a game, and Ivan Flock up a game. Here comes an elite skirmishers and a favored hoplite. Tom just going to bash in with everybody here. Has his battle-wise valor. And the redraw on Sun Guide that have been grip tied. Seems like you just send the oh, team, yeah. right? Oh, the Sun Guide. Gift of Immortality in Daniel Unwin's hand, along with Elite Skirmisher and Mortal's Ardor. How good do you think Gift of Immortality is? I don't, I don't really care for the card very much. Really? I've, I don't, I don't think. I've, I've, pr I've played it in the sense that I try to play every card. Right. That's sort of in the range of playable at least once. Yeah. But I, I don't even. It's invisible to me in a draft pack. Now, now that you've tried it and not been yeah. impressed. I mean, I'm, I it looks decent to me. Like sure. it triggers heroic. You put it on something awesome, it comes back. I guess it doesn't bring back all the enchantments you've piled up on your awesome creature. So. Yeah. Hoplite box. And set six damage. Yes. And here's the Sun Guide back again. Tom's still sitting on that Battlewise Valor. Daniel's in five, but with the Mortal's Ardor, he has a little uh, secret life he can gain. Yeah, both players do. Second Elite Skirmisher. But it does seem like, I mean, Daniel needs to play defense here. He has to play defense whether he likes it or not. Mortals are probably below average in terms of the tricks that people play in this format. Sure. Still good enough to get some work done. Especially favorite hoplite can pick up a counter and become... All right. So one of the skirmishers gets tapped by Heliod's Emissary. Everyone else comes in. 3 1 wants to trade with the emissary. Hoplite is going to step in front of Laguna Band. Daniel's probably planning to uh, so play he, Mortal's Ardor on the Hoplite yeah, so that it will take down Laguna Band Elder. That's exactly what he does. And I think we're going to see. Yeah, he should have waited. Tom was going to do a trick, but uh, Daniel sort of jumped ahead. And Tom's like, never mind. Yeah, I yielded. You did something. That's fine. But, it's Tom, the but Tom attacking still, player. Tom's going to want to save his Heliod's emissary here. Yeah, no, I don't think it'll change the play, but Daniel did not need to uh, play his ardor until he waited to see whether Tom was going to play a trick. It's a pretty good trick. I mean, the fact that the favorite hoplite. Doesn't, doesn't take, take any, any damage, damage here. Yeah. It's just he gets to trade Mortal's Ardor for a 3-2 creature. Now Tom has some choices, but seems like Battlewise Valor on the, yeah, the Emissary. That's his best creature. Right. And now it's the equivalent of summoning another Heliod's Emissary, right? Yeah. I mean, interestingly, if that had been almost, uh, if that had been any other card other than Lifelink, Tom actually could just win Kill there. him with it, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, he had three power unblocked, so I think he was hoping to add two more and just finish off his opponent. Um, but the life gain from the Ardor means that doesn't work. So Ardor gained, what, two life? Which means Daniel should be at I gained three. four? Gained three, right? Because it becomes a two and then plus oh, one, yeah, plus yeah, one gained from three the life. Ardor. So he's right back at the same five. So there's Offset an observant the Alciad. Yep. She's going on the unblockable guy. It's going on the flitter step Eidolon. It's like, okay, I'm going to start doing some work here. Five. Tom draws another land. Tom does no longer has a great attack here. Mm -mm. Is it a 2-3? Yeah, suddenly there's a 3-3 three, three Vigilance guy that can block everyone but the Emissary. If the Emissary taps that, well, there's still a 3-1 and a... A 2-3. And, you know, Tom just sounds like, okay, 
I'm going to wait until I find, you know, one of the things my deck does. Mm -hmm. There's Gift of Immortality yep. on the Hoplite. Yeah, I mean, it does trigger Heroic. It sure. does. I guess getting back a, a base copy of the favorite Hoplite's not that awesome. Which is your point, why you think the card's only kind of okay. Yeah. And it doesn't trigger Heroic when it comes back in on the, on the creature. Sure. Because you're not casting a spell. It's just coming into play. Right, right. Tom just find a Savage Surge? I believe so. That's interesting. Good. Yeah, he still doesn't have a great attack, though, yeah. right? Yep. All right, he, he needs to get two creatures through. Mm -hmm. Or find a second trick, or... Yeah. He's got yeah. some life to play with, so he can afford yeah. to just kind of hang out. Yeah, seen Corsair. Twelve. Oh, and there's a Horizon Scholar. But That's Daniel Owen doesn't have the sixth land. Oh, oh wow. Oh, he has another Divine Verdict in hand. That's so, no one ever expects. Oh, he's the second Verdict. He has a six and a seven and a second Verdict? Yeah. And Tom is going to go for it here. All right. Emissary taps Hoplite. So there's a 3-1 and a 3-3 available for blocking. Yeah, you got to try trading with Emissary. And he's willing to take... Is that three? Is he dead to Savage Surge without a trick? He is dead to Savage Surge without a trick. At five life. Right? He's taken four. He's got four unblocked. Nico Boney evens things up against Melissa Dutar. Idol on a countless battles. Uh, proves it's, uh, it's a good card. Why it's such a good card. Wow. So Tom has to decide whether to go for the throat. If he goes for the kill and Daniel has a trick... It's probably a blowout, right? Because these combats are not good. His best creature is trading. His sun guide is just going to die. If he goes for the kill here and Daniel doesn't have a trick, he wins the game. But if Daniel does have a trick, he, Tom almost certainly loses. So is Tom going to go and... He, he goes, goes for the kill. kill. Yep. And unless our graphic is wrong, Divine Verdict is going to be really bad news for Tom. Yep. Yep. The three one dies, right? Yeah. yeah. Sure. Good. And there was another sun guide. Now Daniel's got two expensive cards in his hand, and he drew the sixth right. land, so he's able to crack over yep. for three. He's going to be able to scry for that seventh land. Uh huh. Wow, the second divine verdict was awesome there. Yeah, looks like he scryed spell to the bottom, land to the top. Yeah, the battle battle ice hop lights a little late to the party. Now what does Tom do? He's got a crack. I don't know what what he's gonna. No, he's green white and he needs to deal two la the two last damage. It seems really hard from here. It's hard to blame him for going for the kill there. I mean, sure. they were in top deck mode for a couple of turns. You know, Daniel had basically. Is there any value to savage surging the blocked Oresco Sun Guide? You're gonna gain two life, and if he has. But you got to put him on the trick. You have to put him on Divine Verdict no, yeah, I mean, to do that. Yeah, yeah, Tom scoops him up. There you go. Wow. wow. So Tom had Tom had two different attack phases that were attempts to win the game. Oh, and Tom, Tom, the last card Tom drew was Reap with his own. That but, would have been uh, a lot better earlier. Yeah. All right, we got another match to watch after this message. Outfit your magic collection with the newest Born of the Gods accessories from Ultra Pro. You can see the full array of card sleeves, deck boxes, playmats, and portfolios of your favorite magic artwork at ultrapro.com. Play magic at a store near you every Friday. Earn Planeswalker points and battle against your friends in Friday Night Magic. February's FNM promo card is Elvish Mystic. Visit wizards.com FNM for more information. 
All right, we're looking in on the king of the hill table. Mm -hmm. Li Shi Tian, the current king of the hill, is trying to even things up against Christian Seibold, Seibold of Germany. Uh, Christian is 8-1. Uh, and one. Li Shi Tian is 8-0-1. Eight eight oh and one. And one. And the last undefeated player in the tournament, he's just cast coordinated yeah, strike. Yeah, that's a good one. Seibold is down to 10 here. Yeah, Li Shi Tian probably felt pretty good about that attack phase up until the point where the coordinated assault happened. Yeah, it looks like he's been struggling on lands. Oh, Hedonist. That's how the ill-tempered Cyclops got into play. Vader <laughs> Hedonist. But a All savage right, Savage Surge. Surge. Does that undo the coordinated assault? What's uh, Is that a Feral Invocation enchanting the that Cyclops? That is a Feral Invocation. So it's a 5-5 five, five right now. It's a 7-7. Seven, seven, seven. Seven. Trampler. Wow, so he had the trick he needed to undo the coordinated assault. Wow. Is that Prognostic Sphinx? But... Yeah, there's a... Uh, Li Shi Tian's on the... He's down to five life here. Ah. But Prognostic Sphinx and Horizon Scholar... Forced to play defense? Yeah, see, Seabolt's com com comfortable uh, wait, waiting back a little bit here. So next turn, Seabolt can attack for lethal with two flyers? This turn, he's playing defense. Okay. We're going to get the double block here. Is it... Sphinx in the front. Oh. What is that trick? Is that the plus one, plus one, and indestructible? It is. Yeah, yeah plus one, plus one, and indestructible. Takes down the prognostic Sphinx. Now it's just a Horizon Scholar, which is not cannot attack for lethal, even though we think Li Shi Tian is down to five. So... Couple of tricks. Wow, Rage of Perforos on Horizon Scholar. Kablam! <laughs> Hero table defended for at least this game. Absolutely. I will remain the king of the hill for at least <laughs> one more game. <laughs> wow. Choked on mana the whole game, but that's, yeah, but how, he it, had the tricks he that's how it plays out sometimes, though, right? You're yeah. choked on mana, that means your hand is full of spells. Absolutely true. Absolutely true. So I think we're going to uh, hop over and take a look with another live look in. And we're going to check in on Hai Bing Hu, former U.S. national team member versus former world team champion, Ivan Flock. Uh, Ivan, uh, you can see a dead. Dead phalanx leader. Dead right. phalanx leader. Like, but, what are uh, those dice from? Oh, there's the graveyard. Got but, it. Uh, he's, he's, he's left uh, behind a legacy. High Bing's down to eight here. What's the token from? That looks like it's from the... Uh, oh, is that Area Worshippers? Yeah, Area Worshippers. Well, Feral Invocation on this match, too. So, yeah, the 2-2 uh, the Flyer from the Area Worshippers does not get to trade with the Cavalry Pegasus. Because Cavalry Pegasus is now 4-4. Four -four. Also means the Hoplite gets to fly over. So, who is down to four, I believe? Uh, Hybing is down to four. Oh, that's Hero of Arrows? Oh, yes, that's that's Hero Virus. Not a hoplite. That's a Satessan Oath Sworn there that's threatening to uh, go large at the site of the nearest heroic trigger. <laughs> But uh, we're going to let these guys uh, fight it out. I mean, who, who's got uh, his work cut out for him? Yeah. We're, we're going to go back over to the main table and watch Tom Martell see if he can complete step uh, step two of eight. Well, it's more like step one and a half. He's going to force <laughs> the third game. Well, a pair of loyal Pegasus is a, a, a good start to that. Yep. Air Force. Oh. Oh, last breath. Last breath. You Before gained, combat. Yeah, that's... So the other Pegasus doesn't get to attack. Eight. Agent of Fates, which I don't think he can... Agent, uh, Agent of Fates, yeah. I don't think he can activate. I think it's just a 3-2. Sure. Good old-fashioned Gorilla uh, Warrior. It looks like Unwin is uh, constrained on his mana here. Yeah, he missed the land drop. There's a Sun Guide. Mm, missed another land drop. Yep. Discards a Flitter Eidolon. Flitter Step Eidolon. 
Tom, no such problems. Yeah. And Daniel that was scoops Bo of Nylea, I believe. Mm. Yeah. Fine card to concede to. Can we go back? Did they finish that game that we were looking at? I, I, even Flock managed to uh, win that. Okay. But I, I, oh, great. Let's check in but on I think uh, we Melissa can, We can check in on... Uh, this is a match that you'll be able to read about in its entirety on the text coverage. Right. I see uh, Nate Price there working. And we're going to peek in on Melissa DeTora versus Nico Boni. Here you go. We see a Magma Jet getting uh, resolved. And uh, a Magma Jet on the other side of the table getting Funny. resolved. Dueling Magma Jets. Melissa's down to nine here. Nico's on 14. And uh, Second that looks white like for the a Wingsteed Rider. rider. Yep. yep. Bile Blight takes it out. Along with all the other Wingsteed Riders. Here comes a Farragans Giant. That's going to take oh Boney down to f down by f a chunk of five, mm, I imagine. Depends. Does he have an answer in his hand? I mean, he's red-white, oh, so you he probably five can't five. kill a... I mean, if you can deal with a 5-5, five five, then make a 5-5. Five five. You have a 5-5, five five, he says. Does so he have Divine Verdict or something? Yes. <laughs> there you go. I, Divine Verdict's been looking pretty good here in uh, feature matches this round. Harpy? Yeah. That's Lifelink Harpy. <laughs> Not its name. Insatiable Harpy. Insatiable Harpy. Uh, that thing starts to get bestowed. Things get yeah, yeah. Uh, out of hand very quickly. To Melissa's up a game. This is game two. Is that where we are? Yes. Uh, that quickly gets... Oh, it's uh, game three. This is game three. Oh, they've tied that up. Oh, yeah. Yep. Laguna Ban Elder, but no uh, enchantments to gain life with. Still a 3 2. Yeah. And there's another harpy. Yep, Shriek Harpy. So Boney has to decide whether to play tribute? Yes. He decides right, if he, if he, he is going to pay tribute. Right. He wants to keep his Laguna Band Elder yeah. around. He, he doesn't have any other creatures right now. So if you don't pay tribute, uh, you uh, you have to sacrifice a creature. Still one card? Yes. Well, this is down to one card. Nico asking. Two-headed Cerebus. Cerberus. Cerebus is a comic book. I have to keep saying that <laughs> every time. Because he misspelled Cerberus. Really? Yes. Oops. What are the life totals? 13 to 14? Yeah, Melissa's at 14 uh, as a result of that. Uh, Doesn't seem like she can afford to race. I mean, any trick in the two head becomes ridiculous. Of course, any trick, and she probably didn't want to block it either. <laughs> Looks like she has a uh, Kragma War Caller here. Mm. And then, if you're attacking with one, you're attacking with both, it looks like. Okay. Sure. Okay. Take four. Take four. Yeah, now this is a board she can race on. Your turn. Yeah, Bunny's down to 10. They're kind of in top deck mode. I mean, she can afford to take two. Always scary whenever someone attacks with that card. Oh. Mm. Rage of Porphyros. Scry one. Uh, leave it on the top. Mm. Never what you want to hear. Oh, does she have Boon of Erebos and in a, her and hand? And a taunting Boon of Erebos. She was tapped out. She was. Well, she just drew it. Nyxborn Rolliker. Yeah. Plus one power. Still good. Oh, wow. and now Laguna Ban Elder gains wow. three from the Rolliker. So that's, that's uh, she's threatening lethal, or Nico's threatening lethal. Two plus two plus three, and Melissa's at seven. Kill you? Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. All right, Nico Boney stays alive. And this is, this is our uh, back against the wall yeah. theme round, right? Yes. All of these players, with the exception of our King of the Hill table. That is, that is the fourth loss from Melissa Dottara, which... Basically much eliminates puts her. her. Out of it. Yeah.
Yeah, so that that that, that means Melissa is uh, she's not you know, making top eight. Not making top eight. I mean, she can still really, make some money. Some really bizarre bunch of pro points. things need to happen, right. which include asteroid strikes at this point. For, for that to... Uh, yeah, I mean, if somebody sneaks in at four losses, it's going to be somebody who has great tiebreakers, which means they probably needed to be hanging out at the top of the standings all day. Right. We just saw uh, Ivan Flock win 2-0 over Hai Bing Hu. Right. So Hai Bing Hu also knocked out a top right. eight contention. Flock c- continues to keep his back against the wall. But we, but we have two matches still going, and we are going to go down to one of them, which is Tom Martell versus Daniel Unwin. Let's go right back down to that. All right. Here we go. Daniel Unwin leads off with the planes. Both players playing white decks. Uh, Tom's chosen to go blue and to pair with, uh, no, green Tom's to green. play with his, and Daniel is uh, white blue. So you got the double pegasus to start the, again? Yes, he does. Is there a last breath? We see a divine. Oh, he could, oh, play Stratus Walk. He just wants to draw a card. Yeah, yeah that doesn't do anything to stop yeah, the Pegasus just, from he's attacking. He's just cycling it. It's also making sure that it can't block non-flyers, <laughs> which does come up occasionally. It does, it does I've never come had up. it actually matter in yeah. a match, but you can prevent your opponent from blocking by yep. giving their guy Stratus Walk. Yeah, it looks like uh, we're going to see a Divine Verdict here from uh, Daniel Unwin. This is where I don't love Divine Verdict, though. Sure. He's being attacked with three creatures. Yep. He spends his whole turn dealing yeah, with one of them. He drops to 12 here, and Tom's pretty happy to just yeah, keep attacking. Yeah, I'll just attacking. keep adding more guys. There's no and blockers there's over there. There's a bow of Nylea, which yeah. does Not actually so a guy, many things. but so many things. There you get a look at it. It does one different uh, effect for each season. Yeah, easy to remember. All you right, know. so he grip hides the loyal Pegasus. Right, which puts Tom down to no attackers, no blockers, virtually. Right, right. Except for a Sotessan Griffin. Yeah, Bo Niley is going to be amazing for Tom, but he would rather have just played another guy there, I think. Just the way this game's evolved. All right. But yeah, now Griffin and Pegasus should be a good attack. What, uh... I mean, he's just worried about, you know... What are the tricks? Yeah, Unwin has shown a lot of instance. Turns out this game, what he has is a lot of lands, not a lot of instants. Yep. And Silent Sentinel threatening next turn. Can we pull up Silent Sentinel? No, it's being quiet. <laughs> What's in Tom's hand right now? does have the battle-wise valor that he seems to always have. Yeah. No, that's it. Too much. Yeah, even the, even the Silent Sentinel wasn't going to be good enough there. Just too many creatures. <laughs> you hear Tom say, no Faded Retribution there. That's the card <laughs> he was worried about. Sure. So, phase two. Phase two of eight. Too super aggressive. That I means the same way we watched Owen win, right? Owen also needed three games because there was one game where his opponent managed to mount the defense, but... You know, Pantheon seems to think this draft format is about super cheap white weenie strategies. Right. And, and I think Loyal Pegasus was a card a lot of people had questions about when the set first yep. came out. It was like, is this going to be good enough? And I think the answer is yes. Well, oh, you have to. Oh, my God, yes. It, you have to build the right deck, right? All right. And now we're going to look in. Here we go. And this is the last remaining match. This is the king of the hill table. This is Lee Shi Tian, the remaining undefeated player in the tournament, and defending this table. Yep, this is game three. Game three against Christian Sabold of Germany. Christian, who play tested with uh, Patrick Dickman and apparently was playing Patrick's backup deck. In well, Patrick tournament. had a twin deck and an yes. affinity deck. Yeah, like, yeah. actually built 75 yes. cards each. Yes. Decides which one to play and hands the other to his buddy. Yeah. So. Meanwhile, Rachel Perforo is taking down Horizon Scholar. That is good news for Shi Tian. Prognostic Sphinx has come down all three games. Yeah, that, I'm which from is the just floor. one of the, the Such premium a good cards. Yeah, if you were going to do a uh, rotisserie draft of the format, that's going to be one of the cards you that's going to go in that first pass of cards, right? Yes. Oh, and there's and a Stormbreath Storm Dragon. Dragon. And this is 
Oh, oh, by the way. Yeah, that's how I won game one. This is just game one all over again. And I still had all these. Wow. Still had this anyway. Yeah. New king of the hill. Christian Sabold. New Christian king of the hill. He's, yeah. Yeah. He's nine and one. Yeah, there are no undefeateds in the tournament, so Christian Sabold is going to be, be tied your number for first, one seed. hanging out in the feature match area. Wow. Yeah. Welcome back to the booth. I'm Brian David Marshall here with Randy Bueller, and we just watched, uh, we just watched, you know, we got to look at all four matches mm -hmm. again. Uh, Hai Bing Hu just kind of got steamrolled by Ivan Flock. Uh, every time we turned mm -hmm. in, you know, there was just Ivan was just coming in with right, a bunch right. of stuff. Uh, Li Shi Tian and Christian Sabold went three games, but the games where Prognostic Sphinx and Stormbreath Dragon came down. Right, Prognostic Sphinx was not good enough. Yeah, Prognostic no. Sphinx by himself lost was game not two. Do it. But Prognostic Sphinx plus Stormbreath Dragon was good enough, both game one and game and three. The, and that was enough to take the king of the hill table, mm -hmm. which means in the next feature round, Christian Sabold at 9-1 and one will be sitting there, and he will stay there as long as he keeps winning. Yeah, and he'll, he's essentially playing to win pod one is what he's right. doing next round. Yeah. He's 2-0. Presumably there'll be somebody else at X1 and 2-0 to pair yeah. against him. I mean, sometimes because there were uneven records in that pod, the Pairings don't sure. always work out clean, sure. um, but I think we'll get him against the 2-0 player yeah. for the pod title. And then uh, you'll be able to read in the text coverage all the details about the match between Melissa Datara and Nico Boney. Mm -hmm. But Nico Boney, the former world champion, world team champion, world I should team say, champion, yep. uh, defeated her in three games. And then we watched Tom Martell and Daniel Onion, uh Tom Martell. Uh, took it in three games. Yeah, back still against the wall, yeah, but he, he's he, not comfortable there. So all the play back's been against the wall for what five rounds yeah. now. Yeah, other than the hero, uh, other than the king of the hill table, all the tables in this feature match area this round were three losses. So mm -hmm. really playing, uh, you know, not a true elimination, but, but a top eight elimination. Exactly. You know, it's very unlikely that even if even if a person with four losses was going to make the top eight, it's not going to be a fourth loss that comes this early, this early. in the tournament. Right, it's going to be something where you're playing for that last round, and you and you find yourself on the outside, and your tiebreakers are better. Right. And and in Martel's case, he's he's been on three losses since he's five wins in a row. He was two and th he was two and two, three. He was two and three. So uh, he, he you know he won out the end of the day, and now he's won his first two matches today. Now he's kind of he's got to be starting to think about it. Yes, absolutely. Well, I mean, he was thinking about it after he won last round. He said phase one of it completed. <laughs> right. he, he knows exactly what he needs to do. And again, for, for a lot of these players, you know, I mean, you know this very well, uh, having been at the formation of the Frequent Flyer program. Sure. Uh, that, you know, platinum and gold, I mean, this is, no, this, is, a good point. this is their currency. It's a really good point. Right? It, 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 literally, this is what they need to do to keep doing this. So even if you're not top eight, right. you know, top 16, top 32, these, these are, pro points these are, are so meaningful valuable. finishes. So valuable. All right, we're going to send it back to the news desk and Rich Hagon while we uh, prepare for to see who's going to win the this draft table and if uh, Christian Sable can maintain his King of the Hill status for much longer. All right, hello everyone. Welcome back to the news desk. Rich Hagan here with you as we close in on the end of the draft rounds. One more to go. It could be pivotal. Pivotal. Let me give you some big results that are coming in here at the news desk, coming into my ear right now. Let me tell you, Tim Rivera was up against Chris Fennell that round. They were both at eight and one. It is Rivera who advances to nine and one. Fennell inflicted a defeat there uh, in limited. He falls to eight and two, still very much in the mix. Remember, three losses where you want to be, four losses where you do not want to be. Now, what about Michael Hetrick, your overnight leader? Eight and oh, the only undefeated record. We saw him lose in round one to Li Shi Chan of Hong Kong. So he got knocked off the King of the Hill. We've just seen Li Shi Chan knocked out uh, from the King of the Hill chair by Chris Christian Sabold. We'll see if the German Magic Online qualifier can stay in that chair for more than a round. No one else has. Hetrick this round was paired against Sean McLaren. Uh, and it was McLaren, another Magic Online player, uh, notably from Canada, who wins. That means Hetrick is 0 and 2 in draft this morning. The overnight leader on the slide needs to put a full stop in this slump before it gets serious. At 8 and 2, he's still utterly in the mix for top 8. Of course he is. He was the 
the overnight leader, but you do not want to get up and start 0-2 in draft. Imagine, you're sitting there, you're watching your lead diminish, it disappears, now you're in the pack, you're still holding this 40-card monstrosity that's gone 0-2, whether it's a good deck and you've been unlucky twice, or just, as we say, a pile, well, you've got to play one more round with it. That's the situation facing the overnight leader, Michael Hetrick, right now. Why don't we take a look at our draft pods then, the seven draft pods that had players at six and two or better. We start with draft pod one. There you see, this is the scores on the doors. McLaren up to 9-1. Andrup is 8-2, Hetrick 8-2, Florian Pills 7 and 3. The rest, we're still waiting for the results to come in, though we know, of course, that Sabled has defeated Li Shi Chan. Scores have not gone to the scorekeepers yet. Yet. The big match we're waiting to find out there is Matthias Hunt from 13 Angry Men against Patrick Dickman of Germany. They're still playing. Uh, Dickman desperate to get back to modern where he should shine. Let's take a look at draft pod two. Where do we see the scores on pod two? There we are. Rivera up to 9-1. Hendrix, Fennell, Grin at 8-2. Results waiting to come in from Gabriel Ongoin against Bransfield. And then Andrew Shrout, 7-2. Joseph Kevany propping up that list right now. He must win to avoid that fourth loss that would be functionally elimination for him. On we go to draft pod number three. Let's take a look. Three of the results are here are in. What a mouth-watering clash that is at the bottom there. Quentin Martin of England, Pro Tour Top 8 from Prague in 2006 against the man who won Pro Tour Columbus a decade before 1996, the 96 Player of the Year, Olorada of Sweden. Meanwhile, six and four, that João Andrade of Portugal functionally gone we believe seven and three on the edge Dembinski van Egen of the Netherlands Jingwei Zheng and then Loss is still to give. Matej Zatelkai doing very nicely yet again. He's really on a tear. And at 8-2, David Fulk of the United States. What about draft pod four? Let's take a look here. Draft pod four, all the results are in. And that means six fours are gone, we believe. And the fourth loss has happened for both. Elias Watzfeld, former Platinum Pro, and your Dragon's Maze Pro Tour champion, Craig Wesco, we believe is done at six and four. The best he can do now with six straight wins would be 12 and four and with tie breaks coming the fourth loss so early in the day early in the event still only in round 10 he is likely to be well behind other players who end up with four losses it is not 100 percent certain but we're dealing with the one percenters as we say so uh, also at that pod who's up at the top who is setting the pace it's iron van lewen eight and two double grand prix winner rotterdam and paris jake Wilson, multiple Grand Prix top eight, still just a teenager, one of 10 teenagers in the field from face-to-face -face games. He's around ahead of Josh McLean, who's at seven and three. Brian Kibler, we said he needed to stop the rot. He was 5-0, then went 1-3, and he has avoided his fourth loss for now. He's seven and three from Team Channel Fireball. I think that is a monster pod, the best of the bunch, not ignoring records specifically. Let's move on to draft pod five, see who we've got there. Well, this you're going to see a lot more about in just a minute because we've got Zach Hill lined up for a really cool feature for you. This is pod five. Remember, fourth loss, again, very bad news. That means Sam Farmeratnam in big trouble from the one percenters and Harry Corvese, TCG player. We think they're done. The seven and threes, Ayers, Lundqvist, Gavela, Turtenwald, and then eight and two, Tamash Gleard and Alexander Orojak, who's doing terrifically on Revolution. Let's move to pod six, see what we've got there for you. And in pod six, all the results are in. Raymond Tan of Malaysia, he is doing the business again. The Malaysian in his first pro tour came in at 6-2, as all these people did, and he is now at eight and two. So he will play to win his draft pod. Omri Tubiana, 7-2 and one. He drew with John Sittner this round. Finkel, Pellerin, Cassidy, Duke, all at 7-3, and then Marcelino Freeman, we think, done at 6-4. And, and finally, draft pod 7. Let's see what we've got there for you. One result to come in. It is a mouthwatering clash between Alexander Hayne of Canada and Kai Burnett of the one percenters, 7-2. and two. So they're not playing for elimination. We believe that Seamus Kelhan and Antonio Del Moral Leon of Spain 
are done at six and four. Still alive, Kaufman, Sochirek of the Czech Republic, and the Finn from almost finished Ansi Alkio. We are almost finished, just time to mention Jared Butcher leading that pod. And those are everyone who came in today too at six two or better. So plenty of results still coming in. I'll keep you abreast of those, but we're gonna turn to a very special feature sort of a game show and you can certainly play along at home. If you haven't already checked out the draft viewer, this is your chance to look at every pick from every pack from all eight chairs at one particular draft table. This morning it featured Owen Turtonwild, which we saw uh, him draft during the morning. And Zach Hill's over at the wall behind me and we're gonna give Zach the chance to put himself in all eight chairs. He hasn't seen the draft viewer. He doesn't know what they picked. We're going to see how close he gets to putting himself in the frame of mind of the eight pro players who sat down this morning to draft those packs. So, uh, Zach, let's take a look. Let's uh, see what we've got up on the board. I think we're going to kick off. Um, uh, we're going to uh, kick off in just a moment because it's time for first pick, first pack. All right. 